Festival of Holidays is back! This is Epcot's shortest festival, so you're gonna wanna make the most of it. Also, the first day of the festival can get wild, and today will be no different. You never know what's gonna happen! Oh my gosh, that was a surprise! <laughs> Epcot International Festival of the Holidays runs from November 25th through December 30th this year. It is the shortest festival of the whole year at just about a month, but we're going to see a lot today. There's still a ton packed into that short festival. We're going to see entertainment like the holiday storytellers and the celeb-filled candlelight processional. You won't believe who we're going to see tonight. We'll see holiday Day merchandise and decorations, and of course, a ton of holiday food, including that cookie stroll, an actual cookie scavenger hunt where you get a free cookie at the end. Is there anything better? I, I am very lucky and I am on food duty today. I mean, a lot of us are, but I'm on like a lot of food duty and I'm pumped. I'm also on cookie stroll duty. I'm thrilled. Opening days of festivals are always going to be really, really busy. Look at all these people rope dropping Epcot right now to be some of the first to experience Festival of the Holidays 2022. Now, we <laughs> now have a, a way of finding out how busy the parks are going to be the night before, and that is based on the new pricing system for Genie Plus, okay? Based on demand, the price goes up kind of like with airlines. Remember it was $15. It was a set $15 when it was first unveiled. Today it is at $29. Almost double. All right, crew, so the first thing I get to do today is I get to find the festival passport. So it's right here as soon as you come in. When I was here this morning, it was on the right side past the maps, but it also will be around the world showcase in case you forget to grab one. So then it does talk about how it's by Advent Health and Walt Disney World, healthy holidays, very cute. And you could even write your name in your hometown. Like you can claim, it's truly a passport. It has all of the entertainment that you can find during the festivals, where you can find them, all the good stuff. My Disney experience will have those times. Each page is a different one of the booths. It kind of gives you example photos of certain things, beverages, the food. It's You're basically one-stop shop for everything you might need. And it even has all the information about the cookie stroll in the back. We're in and there is a mad dash. Now the festival booths aren't open yet, but the festival merchandise is available at Creations. And that is where we're gonna head first. It doesn't look like that's where people are going. I think they are rope dropping attractions right now. So I think we got a combination of people having like a regular Epcot day. Maybe some of them didn't even know it was the opening day of Festival of the Holidays. And then people like us who are totally obsessed and have to be here first to do everything. But I... <laughs> There's no avoiding it. This is, talk about a bottleneck. I mean, it's literally the shape of a bottleneck. Now, when you're headed to an Epcot festival, the booths will typically open at 11 a.m., which means you don't need to hurry to start eating first thing when you arrive, since the park usually opens much earlier. Today, it was 9 a.m. My first stop at a festival is always gonna be one of the merchandise locations, like Port of Entry, to one, take a gander at the festival merch, and two, grab the festival gift card. Now the festival gift card is usually a little wristlet like this. It's a tiny gift card that they can scan at the festival booths. You can get it at the booths, you can get it at the merchandise locations, you can get it reloaded at those places as well. I love using this because it's a great way to keep track of how much you're spending. I just toss on what I want my budget to be, 100, 150 usually at the beginning of the day, and then uh, I find out when I've hit that point and can decide whether or not I want to add more. Plus I don't have to keep pulling my wallet out because it's just right on the wrist. <laughs> Unfortunately, friends, I believe we have to part. There's a Thank lot of festival you. to see, and we're so splitting much. up to cover well, wait, wait, pretty much all of it. to sort all our stuff. We put it all in the same table. Well, we better get moving. Everybody start. Yeah. Uh, is this? Oh my gosh! Have you is seen this mine? I don't know. Oh, grab a bag any, and run. Has anyone seen <laughs> my cinnamon these? stick? Oh my gosh! I brought my cinnamon stick grandma. to smell oh, jolly. No. This is Epcot, Grandma. Oh. Oh, I smell like peppermint. <laughs> I, I, I don't have a lot of holiday gear, so I, I dressed cozy or like a lumberjack. I don't know what I was thinking. Hi. Hi guys, good morning. So, good morning. Here, that's what you get today. A weird flannel shirt. It is light flannel, but it's definitely flannel. All right, so for one of our first ride overlays of the day, I'm gonna head into the Land Pavilion. Here at Epcot, they do two special ride overlays for the holidays that will just take place from November 25th 
until a little bit after Christmas. So one of our first ride overlays is Living with the Land. This is a slow moving boat ride that teaches you all about the education of agriculture and what we can do to live with the land. Every single year they add beautiful Christmas lights and a lot of kind of Christmas theming throughout it. Also, have you ever seen anyone rope drop Living with the Land? Because this is truly what I just did. Okay, so we just hopped off living with the land for the holiday overlay, and it was so neat. There were Christmas lights everywhere and a special reindeer Mickey topiary. It's really cool. But what's even cooler is if you ride it at night, you can just see the Christmas lights even more. So we will come back later tonight. Gift card in hand, or should I say in wrist? Uh, means I'm off to my first stop. Now, again, festival boots don't open for a bit, but there are some festival eats we can get first thing in the morning, and that's where we're headed. We are headed to Connections Cafe and Eatery, which is one of the newest dining locations in Epcot. It is well, sort of on the still under construction Future World side, and there are actually some special holiday festival offerings here. Um, we're gonna hunt them down. Now, not only do Epcot festivals draw a lot of crowds in general, but it's also literally the day after Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving week, Christmas week, and New Year's week tends to be the busiest, so you can see the line here is pretty long. Before I eat the cookie though, we're gonna head right next door to Connections Eatery. Really next, I said next door, it's really the same building. Which is where we're going to get a couple of holiday beverages to go with our cookie. So where Connections Cafe is a Starbucks, Connections Eatery is just that, an eatery. Uh, any time of year you can get pretty worldly eats, different like internationally inspired burgers and pizzas and things like that. It's pretty tasty. All right, so here's my haul from Connections Cafe and Eatery. So in Connections Cafe, we have the holiday sugar cookie, which is a part of the cookie stroll. Then from Connections Eatery, we have the non-alcoholic Coquito milkshake, and then an alcoholic Coquito milkshake with Bacardi Superior rum, and this holiday sangria, which is made with Indaba Chenin Blanc, layered Apple Jacks brandy, white cranberry juice, and boba pearls. It doesn't look very Christmassy, but we'll see how it tastes. My favorite part about it is that they have these little stamps that are actually themed to like the cookie that you're eating. So this actually looks like the cookie I'm about to eat. Torn in half already. Um, it's super cute. It's got like all the little like Christmas sprinkles on it. Classic sugar cookie. Um, not overly sweet or anything like that. These are baked fresh. I was watching them bake them over there. I was literally watching them like put the sprinkles on them and put them in the oven. Um, this is not anything special, but it's a super festive cookie. Sugar cookies just make me think of Christmas, especially those ones that have like the trees or the reindeer on them, that I eat all of them raw, and then I have to go back to the store and get more to actually bake. But it was pretty tasty. I think it's a great addition to the cookie stroll. Do I think it's the most special cookie on the cookie stroll? Probably not, and I haven't even had the others yet. So if you want something a little more unique, you might want to try the other cookies, but this is definitely gonna be a crowd pleaser. Uh, little kids too, especially would love this. This is the non-alcoholic Coquito milkshake, so I'm gonna try this one first. They were on straws. Look, I'm a god milk ad. This is a very rich milkshake. It's got a lot of that Coquito flavor. Coquito is kind of similar to eggnog, except that it's coconut based. So like, this is a slightly coconutty beverage. I will say, it's not overly coconutty. I'm not a like, crazy coconut person, I don't love it but this is not off-putting to me. It's also got some like spices in there that make it a little more like nice on the palate. There's also this one with Bacardi. That's really, really good. My dad makes a super alcoholic eggnog. I know this doesn't have quite the level of burn that his does. That's what's reminding me of. An alcoholic eggnog with a little bit more coconutty flavor. So if you're an eggnog fan, I recommend trying these out. They're really tasty. We have the holiday sangria. So this one surprised me because it doesn't really look very holiday. It has boba in it that I think are supposed to be red and green, but they're green and orange, so it just looks like a Pandora drink. But it is a white wine sangria. I'm not a huge sangria person, but I do prefer white wine sangria, so let's see how it goes. Ooh, this is really tasty. Okay, so it's a, it's a lighter white wine. I think it's a dry wine, but there's a lot of sweet, like, juicy flavors to this, so it's not an overly sweet sangria, but it certainly isn't an overly dry one either. It tastes a little bit like candy, 
like Fruity Candies like Sour Patch Kids or something, but only a little bit without the overly sweetness. I really enjoy this. I think this is a really tasty sweet treat. Now, I don't find it to be the cutest beverage, and there are a lot of really interesting holiday beverages at this festival. If you go hard for some sangria, if sangria screams holiday to you, it might be worth trying. It's certainly refreshing, and it's still hot out even in November, and will be in December here in Florida. And this is controversial. I love popping boba. I'm gonna eat all of these like a crazy person. I came from here. This is a hot chocolate with whiskey, peanut butter, whipped cream, and some candied nuts on top, so let's give it a taste. I almost inhaled a candied nut. Ooh, very strong on that whiskey peanut butter. Very chocolatey, very creamy. I'm overall really impressed. I really enjoy this. It's definitely got that chocolate, really good, strong chocolate flavor. I can taste that peanut butter whiskey. That whipped cream gives it that extra creaminess that all hot chocolates need. This is really good. I found marshmallows too. We have our eyes on the prize of all the awesome Festival of the Holidays merch inside Creations shop. Kind of a shocking twist. Cast members, inside Creations, and I looked everywhere, informed me there is no festival exclusive merchandise this year. They did recommend that I try the towers as they call them, Disney Traders and Port of Entry, the two stores at the entrance to World Showcase. So I'm definitely gonna stop in there. And they did say there was some kind of exclusive teddy bear in Germany. So I'm gonna check that out. All seems a little odd. All right, merch search continues. Disney traders, here we come. We're not gonna see any festival in here, so we will head over to Port of Entry. Walking up to Port of Entry, I can already see the big Epcot 40 display, which leads me to believe we are not going to get any festival merch here either. But look what we are gonna get. Oh my God. What's your scoop? We got some new merch. Where? Right over here. You wanna go see? Shirt. 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 I think that's the back of the same shirt. It is the back of the same shirt. Shirt. Okay, so back, back of shirt. Pin. Pin. Cup. cup. It's a mini it's, mug it's, though. It's, it's Show them how mug. tiny it, it is. It is. It's not small enough for an espresso shot. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Big enough. But maybe you like ten know. espresso shots. Good morning. Yeah. Front of spirit jersey. Back, back of spirit jersey. Duty and Burke. Ooh. Ornament. Ornament. It lights up. Magic, Magic band. band. Look, there's only a thousand of these. One in a thousand. That's what they say about me. Stop talking. <laughs> oh, you're you're doing you're doing work. When my work messes up your work, you, it's time for me to go. <laughs> okay, so for my first stop today, I'm here at Joffrey's. So one of the drinks I'm trying here at Joffrey's is the horchata cold brew. I'm very excited. I love horchata, and I live for cold brew. So we're gonna see what this tastes like. Hmm, okay. Well, I don't know how to describe this. I know I, sh I should be a little bit more excited. So it's heavy, heavy, heavy on the horchata, but the milk leaves kind of like a film in my mouth that I don't normally get with uh, other horchata. It's heavy on the cinnamon, but in the way that there was a lot of cinnamon on top that didn't dissolve into the drink, so it's kind of grainy in my mouth. I don't love it. This is not my favorite Joffrey's drink I've ever had, and I'm a huge Joffrey's fan. It almost tastes like lotion smells. I don't know how to describe it other than that. It's not leaving a great taste in my mouth. It's not bad at all. If you really love cinnamon and horchata, this might be worth a try to you, but if you feel weird about kind of textures in your mouth or if it leaves a film, or if you're just weird about it being too almost like, and not thick isn't the word, almost too creamy. Something's not quite quite right with this one. After Joffrey's, the first thing I had to come grab was donuts. And I got the donut box. Okay, so first here in the back is the croissant donut with cinnamon sugar. And then this is the holiday yeast donut with vanilla icing and red and white sprinkles. Then down here we have the eggnog and cream filled donut with cinnamon icing and crumbled ginger snap cookies. Oh my gosh. And then finally we have the chocolate peppermint donut. Look at these. So this was $18 for all four. 
eggnog and cream filled donut. I did tear it apart because I wanted to see what the inside looked like. Oh my gosh, that is delicious. The ginger snap cookies just remind me of a slightly sweeter graham cracker. It's a really cakey donut. The filling reminds me a lot of like a Boston cream pie uh, donut. It's not overly sweet though, which I really love. It's really yummy. Um, I don't like it as much as the eggnog. It's a bit denser. The sprinkles are cute. They don't really add a flavor. Good, just tastes like a normal vanilla donut though that I've had not at Disney World. Chocolate peppermint donut? Wait a minute, wait a minute. The chocolate is like a perfectly melted milk chocolate and there are small little crumbles of peppermint in it so it still has that flavor. Reminds me a lot of a peppermint mocha coffee. Even though this one was here last year, I did grab the gingerbread milkshake just to try again because last year it was an annual pass holder exclusive and this year it's not. All right, so I did get the milkshake because you just, yeah, there's donuts and milkshakes. What else can you hope for, you know? So I got the milkshake. I don't. This is almost what I wanted the horchata drink to be from Joffrey's. It's just thick enough, but there's no like film in my mouth. It's super sweet, very cinnamony. Cinnamony, that's kind of hard to say, but that's really delicious. The croissant donut. This is so flaky. Can you see the layers there? I really love this. I did not think I would like this one at all. This is it, this, this beats the other two. I did not, I thought this would be my least, my least favorite. It's weirdly delicious that it's so crunchy, but the inside is very soft. The sugar is getting everywhere, so if you don't like that, you're not gonna enjoy this, but it just tastes almost like a snickerdoodle cookie, like the cinnamon sugar. 10 out of 10 here. We are here at Sunshine Seasons in the Land to get another cookie stroll cookie. m and m this time, baby. Oh my gosh. I got too excited about the M&M cookie and I dropped my phone. I got the M&M cookie here. I love M&M's, but the cookie itself on this one is not as good as the sugar cookie at Connections, and it's also a sugar cookie. So though the M&M's do add, it's a much crumblier cookie. There's not as much like sugar cookie flavor. Um, and it's even though the M&M's are red and green, it's not as festive as Christmas tree sprinkles. So between the two sugar cookies, I would go for Connections Cafe, but there's a lot more cookies to try. So who knows? Guess what I just heard? One of our favorite beings on this planet is wearing his holiday sweater. He's apparently wearing it today for the first time this season, and we get to see it on the first day. I can't wait. Oh, Who is this? It's Figment! Figment? I thought I told you not to interfere. But you got it wrong, Doc. It's not about listening with your ears. It's about listening with your imagination. Imagination is a blast! Over here at the refreshment porch, this is where you can get that traditional poutine, but today I am grabbing that turkey poutine for $9, and then I'm getting that cojito soft serve uh, for $6, and then I'm also getting that cojito soft serve with spiced rum for $12.50. I have this soft serve, and it is very melty, so we're just gonna, yep. Mmm. <laughs> Ooh, it's very spicy. This is this Coquito soft serve waffle cone. It's very spicy, it's very good. It's a little warm today, so this one melted fast, but this is really good. Also here at the refreshment port is the spiced soft serve Coquito version, which is also melting <laughs> a lot. You know when they put the like alcohol on top of something? That was straight liquor, but Again, the cojito by itself, super good. And it adds that, it's already a spicy soft serve, but also it brings you into the adult, more fun version of a cojito soft serve. Up next, I got the turkey poutine over here at the refreshment port on my way to the Canada Pavilion. I'm gonna use this Chippendale spork. There's like some cranberries in here. There's the turkey. It's like a Thanksgiving dinner, but poutine style on a bed of fries. I'm excited. Initial thought was really good, but it's kind of mm, mm, mm. meh. It has really good flavor and good potential. I enjoy, I love the little crispies, those onion crispies that you would put on um, your green bean casserole are on here as well. So it gives that crunch, gives that sweetness because of the cranberry sauce. You got the gravy, you got the turkey, you got the french fries. This is like your leftover Thanksgiving meal. And now I want to recreate this at home with french fries. 
Okay, this is actually, this is good. I give this a solid like seven out of 10. Not bad. Mm. Mm. Las Posadas Holiday Kitchen. So I'm very excited. I got three of the dishes. One of the drinks, I got the Giant Tostada de Barbacoa. It's braised barbacoa beef on a giant tostada with chipotle black bean puree, salsa verde, queso cogita, crema mexicana, and pickled onions. I have had this before. I had it last year and it was very similar, but instead of beef, I believe it was chorizo maybe, and it was delicious. And then we have the cochinita pickled tamal. Forgive me, everyone, for everything I'm about to say wrong. The cochin It's cochinita pibble and corn masa topped with pibiana sauce, queso, cochita, and crema mexicana. I'm so sorry. Dulce de leche churro spingled with cinnamon sugar. For the drink that I'm starting with, I got the pomegranate margarita. Mm. So it's really good. I mean, I definitely can taste the tequila is very forward in this. But I actually really love the pomegranate taste. I just tried bits of pomegranate for the first time with Quincy at uh, Jock Lindsay's. That it tastes just like it. It's very refreshing, very light. I like it. I think the hibiscus salt room being able to drink it that way adds a little bit of flavor that I enjoy. I don't know if you don't love. I, it is very alcohol forward. I don't drink a lot but it is I think very alcohol forward so if you like that this is a great one if you want something that's light and refreshing and a little on the sweeter side because of the pomegranates I think you would enjoy this but if you don't like those flavors I definitely would steer clear of this one it's very good it's very sweet I really like the cream it's a good like it's not too thick but you know it's there there is a little bit of extra something but not enough to justify going out of your way to get it Okay, next I'm gonna try the tostada. That's really good. The beef is really, really tender and really like flavorful. The black bean puree is delicious. It's like really creamy and adds a really nice cut of flavor. The creme is really good. It, I mean, it is essentially watered down uh, sour cream, but that's delicious. Mixed with the purple onions that give it a really sharp kick. This is delicious. Conchinita. I'm gonna take a second bite. So it's really good, it's very flavorful. I do think the dish itself is a little bit dry. The meat in it is really good. It's just, again, it's a little bit dry. There's not a lot of descriptive flavors other than it's very, like the corn masa really, really comes through, that kind of cornmeal. The sauce on top is really flavorful, and I do like the peanuts on top, but overall, this is just not one of my favorites. Tostada is definitely my favorite here out of the whole booth. Stop the presses. Earmuffs Pluto. Oh my gosh, I've got to get to the holiday kitchens, but look at Earmuffs Pluto! I wish I could meet him. Bavaria Holiday Kitchen. Uh, this one's located pretty close to Germany, of course. Uh, I don't know how you don't think Christmas when you think of Bavaria, and there's liquid cheese here. All right, we've got our Bavaria Hall, which is pork schnitzel with mushroom sauce, spatzel, and braised red cabbage. Cheese fondue in a bread bowl with steamed baby vegetables and marble potatoes, and our cookie stroll cookie, the Linzer cookie. Wow, amazing. But potato and cheese. This shouldn't be allowed. I keep accidentally dunking the entire veggie in the cheese. Something about this fondue, it's so sharp, it's so rich. It's warm and melty, but not too warm because it's hot out and I'm still eating it. Although, is it ever too hot for melted cheese? No. And you've got these like super nice, like really delicious vegetables to eat with the cheese. This is one of my favorite things at the festival, hands down, every year. Schnitzel time. I really love schnitzel. I used to, my family used to always go to beer garden and I always looked forward to the schnitzel the most. The schnitzel is very thin, perfect texture. A little chewy, but in the satisfying schnitzel sort of way. The breading on the outside is pretty salty, but I'm a like salty person, I like more salt. And it's perfect, perfect amount of crunch, perfect amount of salt in my opinion. And then you've got the gravy that kind of helps to mellow it out. I like how like comforting this food feels because you want holiday food to feel comforting. And I think this reads is very traditionally Bavarian, which I like as well. The Linzer cookie, which is a jam filled cookie, of course, which not typically my favorite, but very well made. Practically melts in your mouth. You've got this beautiful raspberry jam that tastes like real raspberry, not that fake raspberry flavor powdered sugar dusted on top, and the cookie itself is so soft that it almost falls apart when you pick it up. Bavaria is a winner. I'm declaring it now. 
Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Got myself a large Coca-Cola, and we are headed to see my favorite part of all of Epcot International Festival of the Holidays, a musical group named Joyful. All right, this is the site of Joyful, a celebration of the season, which I have to tell you is secretly my favorite live performance group that performs here in Epcot. You know I love Voices of Liberty. But wait until you hear Joyful. Freshman outpost, here we are. This kind of interesting little zone. It's not officially a pavilion. Originally, there were plans for Equatorial Africa to be a pavilion in Epcot, but that didn't happen. <laughs> but they did theme this refreshment outpost and um, outdoor retail market after Africa. So there's that. And Sometimes they have plant-based foods, and for this festival, it just so happens that they do. Peanut stew with sweet potatoes, mustard greens, and roasted peanuts. And up there, somewhere in the Dole Whip lineup, we are going to find, supposedly, a raspberry Dole Whip. And we're gonna try both of them today. All right. Here it is, it smells really good. This is the peanut stew with sweet potatoes, mustard greens, and roasted peanuts. So for my friends with nut allergies, I know how serious those are, and I'm sorry that this is a dish that we can't eat together, but it is gluten-free and it is vegan. The age-old question when eating stew, fork or spoon? I go spoon. You know why? Because it'll pick up the chunks that you would normally have to pick up with a fork, but it'll also pick up the liquidy stuff that makes it a stew. Isn't that ingenious? All right, I got the perfect bite together. <laughs> Again, I feel bad loving this so much because it's just all peanut. I mean, it's like the sauce is peanut butter. There are roasted peanuts. I love the other veggies, but you don't really taste you don't really taste anything but peanuts and peanut butter. I'm gonna say it. It's it's spicy. I think it's more than a kick. I think this stays in your mouth longer than the samosas that I thought were really hot um, in the food and wine festival. So. I'm scared to be um, as enthusiastic as I feel about this because I, I don't want you to think that I just love everything. <laughs> this is incredibly good and I wish my dad was coming to Festival of the Holidays. I might insist that he come now um, because he would absolutely love this. If you're vegan or... Am I on some setting? That's pretty. If you are vegan and or gluten free, you have to get this peanut stew, okay? I'm telling you, this is an order. Here we go, Raspberry Dole Whip, this is it. This is really good. <laughs> it is pretty realistic where um, Dole Whip flavors are concerned. I would say this tastes very much like Maybe they dehydrated raspberries, ground them up, made a powder, and added it to the to the Dole Whip mix. I don't know that's what they do, but it tasted like that. If you're a Dole Whip fan and you like collecting special edition flavors, definitely stop by Refreshment Outpost and try the Raspberry Dole Whip. Okay, so something fun and unexpected just happened <laughs> at the Festival of Holidays. This is the Cinnamon Coca-Cola Slush. All right, I'm ready to give this a try. Oh, that's really good. Oh, wow, with the apple chip? This is so good. 
This is a thumbs up for me. I really like this. All right, up next is over here in the France Pavilion at Le Marche de Noël Holiday Kitchen. Now this is everything, everything everything is new now these are all of the amazing goods that i got here in the france booth up first i have the frozen hot chocolate let's give it a taste oh very good not bad overall really good i don't like it as much as the first hot chocolate that i had i know this one's frozen but i'm not getting it's creamy it's good it's chocolatey it's not giving uh, super strong martini vibes. The other one obviously is it's different liquor, different, different vibe, but it's good if you want a hot chocolate that is spiked for one. Um, and it also matches the heat of Florida because it, it, is, it is hot, so it helps with that element. I'm just not tasting the alcohol in that. Up next, I have the cranberry mimosa. It's tart, it's giving that cranberry flavor. It's very good. Dang, I'm definitely tasting that orange flavor. Orange is very powerful flavoring, but I like the cranberry because it gives it an extra added sweetness and it's not super tart. This is really good. I love mimosas. I'm usually a pineapple mimosa drinker, but this one I would drink because it's kind of canceling out the orange flavor, just a hair enough to where I really enjoy it. Up next, I'm trying this Grenache. Ooh, that one that one is a is it Quincy that's a red wine drinker because she would enjoy that that is if you like red wine that is that is one for you uh, it is not a personal fan favorite of mine but I can see where others might like that one <laughs> up next is this pumpkin spice punch I am intrigued there's oat milk in it which I really appreciate this is a ooh, oh, oh, okay Wow that is creamy deliciousness, pumpkin spicy. It's so good. And it's oat milk. I, I'm genuinely shocked by this. There, there's, there's words coming, I promise. This is really good. That oat milk, it, it gives it that creaminess that it really needs. I love that. It's spicy, has that pumpkin flavor. You get the kick of that uh, punch. This might be a favorite of mine for this holiday season, for Festival of Holidays. The macaron, I'm supposed to be able to pick up with the, the stick, but I am not able to fully pick it up with the stick because it has melted and separated in the middle. That's okay, we're gonna try it, ready? Ooh, 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 peppermint. Ooh, interesting. Where's the peppermint coming from? I'm a mess. It's definitely strong in the chocolate, which I don't absolutely love chocolate, but if I did, I would really appreciate this. It's giving me peppermint patty. If I had to describe it, it's a peppermint patty, but macaron style. Um, is it a fan fave for me personally? No, but I think others would really enjoy this if they love a good chocolate flavor, love that peppermint flavor, love a good solid classic peppermint patty. This is exactly what it tastes like in my brain. Just more of a crunch because of that macaron. All right, unfortunately I did drop uh, one of these halves, but it's okay, we have another half to go. We're hanging on. This is the Napoleon Salmon Brioche. Oh my God. Okay. I personally really enjoy this. It has the layers of the smoked salmon, the dill mousse, and that's, the dill mousse really carries it for me. I love dill. I love a good creamy element. Sliced them to pretty much anything. Anything that's creamy, cheesy, delicious goodness, I like it. Um, that is really good. I love the dill. It's super powerful. The brioche is nice and flaky, very like buttery flaky, so good. That salmon is perfect, it's delicious, it's thin. Overall, that is really, really good. And I think that one would be another, if you like salmon and you like kind of more mature flavors like that, I'm giving it a like a 4.5 out of five, maybe even a five, because that was really good. This is the, Christmas tree macaron and it is so cute. It did fall apart uh, because the sections are kind of glued together with, you know, the icing, but let's give it a taste. Um, ooh, ooh, spicy, pumpkin spicy. Ooh, ooh. Really enjoy it, it's creamy, delicious. That macaron 
kind of fell apart and I'm not sure if it's because of the icing layers in between kind of holding it together. It's giving me shortbread cookie on the macaron part and then the in between layer. It may not be pumpkin spice, but it's definitely spice. Nice spicy flavor. It's confusing, but it's good. Next stop is American Holiday Table. This one is located in the American Adventure Pavilion. It is, of course, going to be classic American Christmas vibes, holiday vibes. Uh, I really like this booth because I really like uh, turkey, and they have that here. All right, I am very excited about our American Holiday Table options. We have slow to turkey with Ben's original stuffing, mashed potatoes, green beans, and cranberry sauce. Blackened catfish with Hop and John. I love Hop and John and comeback sauce. Yum. And then we have the chocolate crinkle cookie, our cookie stroll option from this booth. Look, I found Miranda. Hi. An actual. Are we actually reunited I know. for once? I know. All right. America holiday table. Miranda's over there. Hi. You'll just have to believe me. There she is. Proof. Okay, I'm gonna start with the turkey. This is a staple here at the America booth every year. I get it a lot because it's a huge portion of food. This is like an entire meal. Um, it has a little bit of everything. It's like a leftovers plate after Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday because of Thanksgiving food. I love Thanksgiving food. I'll get a Thanksgiving sandwich year round. I just love it, like turkey stuffing, gravy, mashed potatoes, green beans. And that's literally exactly what this is. It's perfect portion size of everything. It's just a little sampling of everything. There's cranberry sauce on top of the green beans. It's all kind of mixed together just like Thanksgiving leftovers would be. If you are like a Thanksgiving food person, I think that this is your jam. And I really do think it could stand up as a lighter lunch if you have like a bigger dining reservation later, or if you want to split it, if you're eating around the festival, it's a really big portion. I would say avoid this if you don't like a bunch of different foods touching. I know a lot of people especially feel that way with Thanksgiving food. I would avoid that in this case. Um, however, this is a winner as a, as a Thanksgiving food connoisseur. The turkey's not too dry, it's on the moist side. The gravy has a lot of good flavor to it. It's a turkey gravy. Mashed potatoes are soft and creamy. Uh, green beans are perfectly cooked. Catfish time, I'm so excited for this. I love Hoppin' John, which is like a black bean. Uh, salad is not the word, but like a black bean mixture with rice. Mm. That's so good. And this catfish looks amazing. This is crazy. This is my favorite thing I've eaten all day. I'm not saying something, because I love turkey. The catfish is perfectly cooked. It falls apart. Um, it like stays strong on your fork. It's a beautiful piece of white fish, and then it falls apart in your mouth. The black bean Hoppin' John has like little pieces of, I think, collards in it. And it's covering this like perfectly cooked rice, which the rice at Festival Boost can be very hit or miss. It is a huge portion. Delicious, delicious, delicious. You have to be a fish lover, and the, the catfish actually has a little bit of heat to it. The blackened seasoning on the outside is like a true blackened seasoning. It's, there's a little bit of heat in my mouth. The sauce on top is awesome. There's definitely Cajun flavors to this. I'm like really impressed. And we'll wrap up with the chocolate crinkle cookie. I've heard amazing things about this. People keep walking by me, pointing at this cookie and saying, that's really good. And so, you know, if the people say it, it must be true. It's pillowy, covered in huge clumps of sugar. Um, it's a very true chocolate crinkle cookie. This is great because it's got the chocolatey flavor without being over, overly chocolatey or overly rich. I don't love like really rich chocolate stuff. I'm not like a molten lava cake person. Um, but I do really like this cookie because it's just not overly, it's more of like a cocoa or like a bittersweet chocolate flavor, but still on the sweet side. I think it's gonna be the winner of the cookie stroll cookies. Man, America. Showing out. I got the good boots today. Okay, so first up we have the chicken skewer with creamy peanut sauce. Then we have the beef and noodle soup bowl with slow braised beef shank, green onions, and house made chili oil. Yum. Then I got the Lucky Mo drink, which is Sky Infusion Vodka, Peach Schnapps, Pina Colada Mix, Orange Juice, and Soda Water. Sounds sweet as could be. And then I also got the Vegetable Spring Rolls with a citrus sauce. Then the citrus sauce is kind of down below it, if you can't see. I'm gonna start with the Beef and Noodle Soup Bowl. This has the slow braised beef shank in it, green onion and house made chili oil. It's a really nice chili oil. It adds flavor and a little bit of heat, but not much at all. It's more like, almost like a coating. It's really, I really, really enjoy that. I love chili oil though. There's also some onions in here. Mmm, it's really delicious. The green onions add a really nice freshness. This is a really nice surprise because the noodles at the Food and Wine Festival were not good from this booth at all. 
That's delicious. I think it could potentially be dangerous. The peach is a very heavy flavor along with the coconut from like the pina colada mix. It's very light, very refreshing, very fruity. I am now gonna try the chicken skewer with the creamy peanut sauce. And I actually really love that. Sometimes I'm funny about peanut sauces. It's almost too gritty, like I can tell the peanuts weren't absolutely just eviscerated. Like I don't like that texture. But this is really, really good. It's incredibly creamy. The chicken has a little bit of heat, but the peanut sauce really cuts through that and makes it more flavorful than just heat. The onions add a really nice freshness. And then the toasted sesame seeds just add some good flavor. I love the flavor of that. Let's see if the veggie spring rolls live up to the hype. Okay, first things first. The citrus sauce is wonderful. It's really reminiscent of a sweet and sour sauce. I love sweet and sour, so I really love that. And the spring roll, which, again, I've had this all for a minute, trying to take pictures of things. The spring roll is still really crunchy, even though it's been kind of soaking in this sauce. It's, it's really wonderful, actually. As I was heading to my next stop, which is, spoiler alert, over in Morocco, I did find the annual pass holder drink for the Festival of the Holidays. It's an annual pass holder exclusive, and it's vodka, lemonade, and blue carousel, and it's frozen, and I'm very excited to try it. Ooh. That is so sweet. That's <laughs> crazy sweet. That's really good though. It's very heavy on the acidity from the lemonade, but then that blue kind of, I think it's like a blue raspberry car carousel uh, flavoring is really good. And that's what's so sweet is that kind of blue raspberry flavor. It's very good. It's very cold, which is nice because oddly enough, it's super hot today. It's literally not been in weeks, but whatever. Really, really good. You cannot taste the vodka in it at all. I only got one shot. Um, would not know it was there if they had not told me. You should definitely try this if you're an annual pass holder. All right, I have just gone into port of entry and gotten something really fun, okay? There is a scavenger hunt that goes on during festival of the holidays. It's kind of similar to the Easter egg hunt and the pumpkin hunt that happens um, during Easter and Halloween. So this is not free. This is $9.99. If you complete it, they give you a prize. If you don't complete it, they give you a prize. All right, they will give you a prize. There's stickers on, <laughs> they'll give you a prize no matter what, once you've, once you've purchased it for $9.99. There are stickers on the back. We are going to find three of the things on this list because we don't want to spoil it for you completely, but I want to show you how fun this is. For just under $10, uh, you can go on a cool hunt with your family and you get a cool prize at the end. I can't wait to see what we get. I'm over here taking pretty pictures and video of this board on one of the rocks in Norway, and I'm noticing that people are gathering for one of the storytellers to come out here in Norway. So the storytellers are a really beautiful Epcot tradition. There are actually 12 storytellers around World Showcase in total, each representing a different country. And they are telling stories from their country and they're telling us about their traditions and their individual holidays. So I love this because it's a chance to maybe teach us about what other people do. I love the American traditions of Christmas and the holidays just as much as anyone, but I think it's so valuable for especially our children to learn that there is a world outside of the great USA and it is important to connect with other cultures and connect with especially people of other cultures. And that's what I love about the Epcot storytellers. But believe me, when the kitties leave me a nice steaming bowl of porridge in the hayloft, it warms me up on a cold winter's night. <laughs> I can viper too. <laughs> Look what I spy with my little eye. It is an Olaf, and that is what we're looking for. 
on the scavenger hunt. There are fun little Olafs hidden all around World Showcase. Very similar to the way we see Remy's during the uh, Food and Wine Festival and the eggs during the Easter egg hunt and the pumpkins during the pumpkin hunt. We have found the Olaf in Norway. I am going to put the sticker on our board. All right, my next stop is Yukon Holiday Kitchen. This is the Canada booth, basically. It is in the Canada Pavilion. So here we have the seared scallops with parsnip silk, apple chutney, and hazelnut croquant. The beef bourguignon with crushed potatoes. And our final cookie stroll cookie, uh, though there are more options, which hopefully my friends have shown you today, the Snickers Doodle cookie made with Snickers bar pieces. Pretty good load. We'll start with the scallops. So I got one very well cooked scallop and one scallop that's a little overcooked, a little on the chewy side. Both of them have a really nice caramelized kind of glaze to the top. Um, and there's this parsnip stick around, which to me kind of just tastes like really finely whipped potatoes. And the whole scallop dish has a little bit of a sweeter spin. It's still savory because it's still fish, but it's like a sweet glaze. And the beef bourguignon, another huge portion. The steak is definitely like stew meat variety, so it's tender because it's been soaking, but it's not a tender cut, so it can be a little chewy. I don't mind that though in like a bourguignon like this. Um, the potatoes are really like lumpy, like they're not very creamy mashed potatoes. That's not necessarily a bad thing. All mashed potatoes are good mashed potatoes unless they're like, you know, they've been in your fridge for 26 days. But this is a really, really heavy dish. It's warm. I think it would go really, really well if it were a little cooler outside. Maybe as we get into December at night, this would be a good one to grab. It's something that's special though. This feels like something you could make in your crock pot. So I wouldn't put this on a must-do list. Final cookie stroll cookie. Then we get the free one, the prize. I'm going right for the middle because that's where all the good stuff is. Somehow I'm having trouble telling if the base cookie is a sugar cookie base or a peanut butter cookie base. I kind of think it's just a generic sugar cookie with maybe like a little bit of peanut butter. It's not nearly peanut butter enough in my opinion. If you get a bite that has a lot of those really big peanut chunks, then it's peanut butter enough. I'm a big peanut butter fan. Regardless, you can definitely taste peanuts. You're gonna have to like peanuts to like this cookie. Might be the richest cookie that I've had today. All these cookies are so big. Why is this so big? It's to share, that's why. Uh, we are headed to go get our prize because we ate five cookies and for that we should be rewarded with another cookie. Look at all of these amazing goodies here at the Japan Pavilion. We have the sushi Christmas tree, which looks so good and so yummy. Very excited to try that. This is the New Year celebration soba. Over here you have the uh, milk boba. This is the mochi cake. That right there is that Japanese Christmas punch. Over here at the Japan Pavilion, I'm super excited. This Christmas sushi looks so good. I'm just full-fledged going in. I'm not mm -mm, hands and all. I got a good piece. It has some little popping pearls on there. I guess. Mm. This sushi roll has crab meat, cream cheese topped with tempura, salmon, and spicy mayonnaise. I really enjoy this. I love a good crab meat roll. That cream cheese really gives that creaminess. The spicy mayo. Love best of the fest. This is the best item in my opinion uh, savory wise that I've had today. So so good. Next up is the New Year celebration soba. It is buckwheat soba noodles and a hot dashi soup with yuzu, shrimp, tempura, fish cake, and chopped green onions. I'm excited. I'm trying to not to drip on my dress. Ah, crap. Huh. The flavor of it is super good. I really enjoy it. It's gonna be a mess. Okay. Noodles. Mmm. Very good. Lots of good flavor on that. It's really good overall, just really in general. I really enjoy this. It has great flavor. Up next, I'm trying this mochi cake. It's a gooey rice cake made with rice flour served with horchata cream, strawberry, tangerine, and sweet red beans. I think if you enjoy horchata, you would enjoy this. It's gooey, it's good, it's delicious. I enjoy the texture, I enjoy the flavors. The mochi is strong. It's, it's not, I don't think it's giving what it should be giving. Up next, I am grabbing this boba, which is just a milk boba. It's cranberry with yuzu cream drink featuring Japanese popping 
strawberry boba pearls, non-alcoholic. Good. I love, I appreciate how the whipped cream has stayed on top somehow and not mixed in. That's really good. If you like sweet strawberry flavors, that delicious. It is very sweet. It's heavy on the sweetness, but I think I've been missing the sweetness today. We've had like hearty sweetness today. And this is just like a nice light, uh, refreshing drink. I really like that. I need to get down to the boba pearls, but that one was really good. Japanese Christmas punch. That's good. Sweetness, what do we got? Just a plum wine. Oh, that's why I love plum wine. There's plum wine in it, cranberry and lemon. I really enjoy this. I love plum wine. That is very good. I can taste that cranberry. I can taste that lemon. Overall, that is a solid drink for me. Japan? I don't, I think the whole, the whole booth is what invested the fest for me. Japan? This is a spot to be. I'm serious. Bring, bring the cutting board. If you have nothing else, bring the cutting board. Festivals are hard. You're gonna eat a lot and you're gonna eat more than you think you will. And you need a place to put them because there's not always table space. So if you don't have a tray like I did not, just bring your cutting board from home. It'll fit in your suitcase, it's light, you know. Finally made it to Tangerine Cafe over in the Morocco Pavilion. Okay, so the two things that I got today are the only two food items that you can grab at Tangerine Cafe right now. And it is the stone-baked Moroccan bread with hummus, jamula, and zua dips. Okay, it smells like a tapenade, so I'm assuming that's what that is. And then this one is the grilled kebab with carrot, chickpea salad, and garlic aioli, and I got the tremula chicken. I'm somebody who loves a char taste. And this chicken is so well cooked, it has a really nice thick char on it. But then that get garlic aioli kind of cuts through any bitterness of the char. It makes it really savory and really, really nice. I enjoy this a lot. I do think the chicken is a little bit tough, but I mean, we're at a theme park. Let's try the salad. I really like it. It's a cold salad. It has chickpeas, carrots, uh, it looks like golden raisins. It's really good. It's very savory and uh, the carrots are really nice and crunchy. And the garlic aioli, there's enough out of it that it's a little bit heavy. So this is kind of a nice like juxtaposition to have a lighter salad. So now we have bread. I'll say it. I'm a bread girl. Anytime I can get my hands on a good bread, I'm pretty happy. This is so good. This is so light and airy and fluffy. I'm gonna try the hummus first. It's really good hummus, pretty smooth. It's not chunky at all. This is the one that looks like the olive tapenade. If you like olives and oil, I'm thinking of Quincy in particular. This is delicious. That's really good. There is a lot of garlic in this one as well, but it's really great and the bread soaks it up well. Okay, and here's the last one. It is the green one. Oh my gosh. Okay, I've said it a thousand times, but the first thing that punches you in the mouth, I mean, it's just super apparent, is the garlic. Almost in the sense of it was like ri incredibly ripe garlic when they made this, but it's really good. Over here at the America Pavilion, I am grabbing that mini funnel cake topped with peppermint, ice cream, chocolate, whipped cream, and crushed peppermint for $9.50. Wow, that looks amazing, I'm so excited. It's gonna be hard with a spoon, but you know. All right, let's give a taste. Mm -hmm. I love the chocolate uh, funnel cake on there. I love the peppermint ice cream. It gives you that holiday goodness that you are looking for. If you love peppermint like I do, this is really good. Overall, these flavors go really well together. This peppermint ice cream, chocolate funnel cake, chocolate icing is super delicious. This is, maybe it's just because it's ice cream and I, I'm a sucker for anything ice cream, but never one good. I just spotted a very rare sight. A YouTuber in the wild. Excuse me, miss. Hi. Are you on YouTube? No. Oh. Have a great day, though. Okay. Bye. Bye. Oh. Excuse me. Is that cookie for me? Well, the I think we black to, and white we cookie. Need to try it. I've gotten in line at Lahayam because I am going to get a latke. I'm going to get a fresh one. Okay, me and my 
bestie <laughs> made a stop in the hive. Doing our camera choreo. Our little camera choreo is my favorite thing that we do. And it's like the first time we've gotten to see each other other than just saying hi and bye. So we're going to go through all of our big Laheim spread. So first we have the pastrami on rye with house-made pickles and deli mustard. The pickle smells amazing. And then we have the smoked salmon potato latke, which looks really good. These are mini jelly-filled donuts. And then I did get the black and white cookie, which is plant-based. And then we also got the frozen New York whiskey sour featuring manifest whiskey and blackberry wine. These are the potato latkes. This is what they look like this year. These are all completely gluten-free and plant-based. All right, let's taste it. Wow. Amazing. The creamy sauce that is plant-based doesn't taste like anything like coconut or anything else that's making it creamy. It just tastes good. And it tastes like dill. There's dill in the sauce and I love that flavor. These are perfect. I love these. I'm doing the pastrami on rye. It's all in my teeth. For pastrami on rye, that's really, really delicious in my opinion. The mustard isn't too much. It's really nice. There's a good amount of like thinly sliced meat on there. Really good savory meat. I actually really love the the marbled rye. It's really kind of soft and the mustard has kind of soaked it up into it. I actually really, really like this and I didn't think I don't like it that much. I'm gonna try the whiskey sour now. That's really good and honestly my first kind of taste of it because there is this blackberry in here is it is really reminiscent of the moonshine sour over in the america pavilion if you've ever had that i get a strong kind of blackberry flavor the foam on the top is actually really fun i kind of like that and i'm not somebody who traditionally drinks whiskey but i really like that it's very sweet very heavy on that blackberry flavor um so if you enjoy that and you kind of like a lighter drink that is still sweet I think this is a good option. All right, this is it. I'm gonna try the plant-based black and white cookie now. Oh yeah, I love it. That's amazing. Would you say it's doughy meets cakey? It's not like cake, it's not like a cake cookie. It is dense though. It's a different texture. It's not as soft as a cake cookie. I'm trying cookie, to figure out I what like it is. It. It's like, it's like it's doughy, candy. doughy meets cakey. Yeah. Kind of. That's what but I said good. originally when you were I you enjoyed were it. me. I'm sorry. I, no. I'm just not <laughs> Mini jelly donuts. I'm not going to try to say the name because I'll butcher it. But they are just mini jelly donuts. It's raspberry jelly and they are powdered sugar. There's powdered sugar on top. Okay. <laughs> the powdered sugar isn't messy, which sometimes powdered sugar can be. The dough is a little bit stale, but I think the raspberry jelly makes up for it. I still prefer the donut box, but if you're here, you need to try this because these are really yummy. Okay, from my last bite here at the Heim, I got the salmon vodkas. It smells amazing. I could smell dill in it the moment I picked it up, and there are capers on top. <laughs> That's delicious. The potato underneath, even though it has gotten a little cold, is really, really good. Very simple potatoes, but I think really well seasoned. And the salmon on top is, it tastes a lot like cold smoked salmon now that it's gotten colder. And the capers add a nice saltiness. The dill is very fresh. I will get this again. This might be a best of fest for me. That is wonderful. In the back here, we have the tortellini in Brodo, which is a five cheese tortellini with house made aromatic winter truffle broth and chives, which sounds so delicious. Then we have this, it's a cured salmon, some blood orange pistachios and basil in there. And then over here is this panettone, which is a panettone bread pudding and vanilla cream all over here in the Ita Italy pavilion at the Tuscany Holiday Kitchen. This is a salmon push pop. We're gonna save that to the last because I'm nervous about that. Um, I said it sounded interesting. I say that in the nicest way possible. Also, how do I open this? Okay, so you just, that's it. Why did I think it was like a can? Forget about it. 10 out of 10 already, I already know. It's not 10 out of 10. It's fine. I mean, I think for me, I need it to be like that creamy element and it's just sitting in liquid, which is fine. The tortellini itself is good. It has a very good cheese factor in there, but it's not giving me flavor. Like the 
water sauce stuff that it's sitting in is not doing anything for it, unfortunately. I'll give him a two out of 10. I'm still waiting on that fish bob. I'm, uh, we're nervous. I'm, I'm nervous, are you nervous? I know we're supposed to have dessert last, but we're gonna have this bread pudding with vanilla cream instead because it looks a lot more appetizing. Uh, oh my goodness, look at that. I'm excited about this one. There we go, there we go. It's creamy, it's delicious. The flavors are beautiful. We're gonna save some of the bread pudding. Push pop of salmon, which I don't know why we decided to put it in a push pop form and scare me. I have comments, Disney. Um, something should not be made like this. And this is that. <laughs> Think about the flavor. Think about the flavor. Think about the flavor. If I, my brain gets, be, gets past the fact that it is in a push pop form, then the salmon itself is good. The flavors are good. Would I get this again? No, that's genuinely just because it's in a push pop and it, th this doesn't make sense to me. The flavors are good, the flavors are there. They're not great, they're fine, they're good. Um, nothing wowing or exciting about them. It's salmon in a push pop. Uh, he gets a two out of 10 as well. Italy's not doing too great. So we have two two out of 10s and this I'll give a, 4.5. The bread pudding, 4.5. Gotta clean that palette. <laughs> Another super fun and cute element is the train, mini train station that they have, and they change out the flags over here per the festival season. So those are the miniature versions of the festival of the holiday flags, and they're so cute. We got the completer cookie, which is this adorable festival of the holidays ornament cookie. It has the date on it. Um, I broke it already, but it's super cute. And get this, a Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special pin, which I was not expecting to get, but it's super cool. Also got from Strollin' with Cookies. Not a bad deal. Eat five cookies, <laughs> get a, another cookie and a pin. Don't love it. Don't love it. The cookie itself is actually pretty good. It's crumbly and it's like, pretty much a shortbread. Not a ton of flavor, but it's still a good cookie. But it is fondant, a thick layer of fondant on top of it. And it's hard to chew through and not very good. But it's super cute. It says Festival of the Holidays on it. And what is a cookie stroll? It's not about the destination, it's about the journey and the cookies we ate along the way, truly. Um, and also, this Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special tin. So, it all turned out okay, even though that cookie was not great. What are we I got some cute pics of it, though. Alright, to wash down our very dry fondant -ish completer cookie, we have the beer flight from Holiday Sweets and Eats. So this flight features the Breckenridge Brewery Christmas Ale right here. Next up, we have the Playa Linda Brewing Company Coquito beer. Oh my gosh, I'm very interested. Started the day with Coquito, and I'm almost ending the day with Coquito. Uh, and then we have the Brew Hub S'mores Porter. So three interesting Christmassy beers here that we're gonna have to give a try. First up, we have the Breckenridge Brewery Christmas Ale. Ooh, that is Christmassy. So it's a darker beer, definitely. It's definitely got like spice kind of Christmassy vibes. It has a little bit of like a molasses sort of flair to it. Very smooth and easy to drink. I think even if you don't like heavier beers, you might want to give this one a try. The Playa Linda Brewing Company Coquito beer. I love Playa Linda beers. Um, you can get them a lot. That's a, uh, it's, they're in, I can't read, it's so dark. They're in Titusville, Florida. Oh, whoa. This is crazy. What is it? Okay, so I can really, it smells like cinnamon and coconut. And I can really taste that too, almost to the point that it's a little off-putting for the beer. Like the cinnamon and the coconut outweigh the beer flavor, but you can still taste the beer, so it feels a little off balance, actually. I think that for someone, this could be their favorite beer just because it is such a powerful, like, packs a serious punch of that, like, cinnamon coquito flavor. All right, and lastly, we have the Brew Hub S'mores Porter. That's a porter. Um, so it's super heavy. This one, I feel like if you drink a 16 ounce, it would fill you up. 
I think it's funny that it's called s'mores. I actually do kind of feel like I'm tasting like sort of the like warmth of graham cracker with the richness of chocolate in here. Um, it's super like heavy. It has a lot of weight in the mouth. I think if you're a fan of Guinness, you'll like this. I like Guinness, so I'm actually a really big fan of this. But I definitely think it's one of those that you'll feel like you ate a loaf of bread when you drink one of them. I'm pretty happy with this, and it did wash down my completer cookie nicely. All right, I am over here at Mel Kalikimaka, which is near the port of entry section. I got the Kalua pork, which is the Okinawa sweet potatoes and mango salad. Next up is the Lomi Lomi salmon, which is tomatoes, onion, salmon, roe, yuzu mayonnaise, and yuca chips, which is gluten free. And then up next is this delicious item, which is a Hawaiian coconut pudding with candied macadamia nuts and coconut in the salmon department. I'm very excited that this uh, is not in a push pop. <laughs> I'm very thankful for that. Uh, this one, all right. We got some boba popping pearls in there, it looks like. The salmon is a little bit on the salty side, but overall the flavors are really good. I enjoy the boba popping pearls on top of there. It just adds a little bit of fun. There's a lot of good flavor in those pearls as well. I'm gonna give it a four out of five. Next up is the Kahlua pork, which looks so good. Stop it. Good together. Very good together. Um, the sweet potatoes is almost setting me off, but it's not. I think I love it. The mango salad really gives it that like good uh, fruity, flavor that it needs. I think this is a solid dish. Five out of five. Now this one, will be, I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. I don't like coconut. So I'm gonna do my absolute very best to give you the most neutral opinion I can. I'm gonna grab a piece that does not have coconut on top of it. What in the creamy deliciousness is that? I don't taste the coconut. And if there is a coconut, it's not strong in that pudding. There is coconut, uh, dried coconut on top with that macadamia nuts, but oh my heavens. Okay, wait, do I like coconut? Am I maturing? Overall, it's creamy, it's delicious, it's light. It's smooth. Wow. We have two five out of fives. So let's come over here and take a look a very cute sleigh with, um, that could be the mischievous barn Santa's elf. Um, looks likely. Not seeing Olaf. <gasps> oh my gosh. Underneath the bear holding the giant string of golden pearls, AKA decorations for your Christmas tree. There is Olaf. And he's got a, he's got some sort of chalice full of candy canes, which I find to be very impressive. And a sleigh. All right, so an aspect of this that I didn't know about before is the fact that you see something with the Olaf that relates to one of the stickers. And remember his chalice of candy canes? Well, guess what? There's a sticker for that. Well, we did it. We got one. <laughs> I'm so excited. This is a new booth this year. We got all the things. Over here in the back is the Impossible Chorizo Tamale. This is plant-based. It has some spicy red chili sauce, gluten-free, vegan, pernil, which is pork. Alpha Jores, vanilla shortbread cookie with dolce, le dolce de leches, 81 Bay Brewing Company horchata beer from Tampa, Florida, the chai ginger meal featuring Boyd and Blair potato vodka. Yum. Mmm. Okay, not bad. Got a bit of a kick there. Okay. That spicy red chili sauce on top is delicious. Um, it's a little dry. The tamale itself is kind of dry. It's good. I enjoy the filling and I enjoy the red chili sauce on top. Mojo pork with toast stones and ketchup mayonnaise. Toast stones. Toast stones. 
I've said toast stone. I have this a whole time. you've said a lot of things wrong. Correct, Amundo. Miranda's from Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> Tostones. Uh, anyways, let's just try it. <laughs> That was good. Is it good? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna use my spork. Yeah. If you would like. That's really good. I enjoy the flavors all paired together. That crunch of the bottom, tostones, is good. The pork is nice and flavorful. It's really good. It's so good. Mm. That's my best of the fest for you. This booth so far. Highly appreciate that one. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> horchata beer. A horchata beer from Tampa. Ooh, that's good. That's what I figured. Yeah, I knew. I was that's like, I tasted super. This. It's very, yep. very drinkable. It's not like it's there's light. not a ton of horchata flavor to it, honestly. It's very light, refreshing. It's like a really smooth, like, like not pale ale. It's like a really smooth, like half of ice or something mm. really, really light, like just like a lager. Something really. Yeah. It's probably a lager. Yeah, that's something what I was really easy to drink. It's super light. It goes down easy. It's kind of like water, but it has a little bit of an interesting taste to it. Kind of those water beers. Yeah. Noche Buena Cochina. Noche Buena Cochina. God dang, I said you were, the wrong You were really close. <laughs> ah, I went to like America, Canada. <laughs> you got the easy stuff. I did get the easy stuff. That's not fair. <laughs> Try Ginger Mule. 15. Good, very spicy, love it. Chai, I can taste the chai in there. I can taste that mule fa flavor. I don't I don't think I love it. I'm confused. There's like, it was good, and then it was like, whoa. That is and now confusing. Because you can taste ginger ale and you taste chai. Yes. And I like both ginger ale and chai. But why is it, should it be together? Together it's a lot. It is a lot. It's a lot. It's together. a lot of flavor. Yeah. I don't order mules a lot because I find that they all taste the same. This does not taste yeah. like a typical mule. No, it doesn't. It's definitely holiday styled mule. And cookies all you love. Oh, I gotta eat the cookies. Yes, you do. So this will be alajones, probably, um, which is a uh, vanilla shortbread cookie with dulce de leche and coconut. Um, and it's hefty. This is heavy. It is like a- This is like a pound. It's a sturdy cookie. Oh, big boy. <laughs> it's gonna be a minute. <laughs> you wanna drink with this cookie. It's shortbread and it's two slabs of shortbread. Look yeah. at how much shortbread that is. That's hefty. And there's caramel in the middle. Dulce de leche and caramel in the middle. Ooh, okay, now I gotta give it a taste. Yeah, I which love is caramel. which is super sticky, heavy in your mouth, along with the shortbread. So you definitely want something to wash it down. Get a water bottle, get yourself a beer, something to wash it down. And that wraps up. That's our final booth. Never found Emma or Breedlove. We didn't, but I'm saving this for Breedlove. I need him to give an honest review. It's, <laughs> it's a little dry. Carry it around the park. I'm gonna carry him. it around the park and I'm gonna give it to Breedlove. <laughs> All right, so I am having dinner tonight at the Rose and Crown because they do a candlelight processional dinner package. That means that I'm going to have dinner here and then I get to go see the amazing candlelight processional that they have over in the America Pavilion at the American Garden Theater. Okay, I officially made it inside. If you've ever been in the Rose and Crown bar, that's just it right over there. And then this is the dining area. There is live music right now, which is so nice. You can get the dining package anywhere from 40 to 100 hundred dollars per adult depending on the night and then twenty three dollars to fifty one dollars for kids depending on the restaurant and the night several restaurants offer it for rose and crown you get an appetizer an entree and a dessert or one full buffet depending on where you're eating at and you get one non-alcoholic beverage and also, in addition to all of this, you get one guaranteed seat per person to a candlelight processional performance held on the exact same night. So tonight, I can't wait to see this person. I'm so excited. I don't want to spoil it for you guys, but I love this movie that this main person is in. It's a Marvel hero, and he's kind of iconic. Okay, so these scotch eggs are golden fried hard-boiled cage-free eggs wrapped in sausage and a mustard sauce on a bed of what looks like maybe arugula? The egg itself? It's very hard-boiled. It just tastes like a regular hard-boiled egg that you could have at home. But the sausage around it is really, really flavorful and super crispy on the outside. The mustard adds like a nice little kind of acidic flavor. I know acidic's not the right word, but it has a nice kind of cut through that harsh hard-boiled egg taste. 
okay, so I'm just sitting here eating my scotch egg. The piano just, he just finished playing. And I just had to say, that was truly one of the most magical moments of my life. Sitting here listening to him play Mary Poppins as I just have this really nice dinner waiting to see somebody that I really like in the candlelight processional. It was just really beautiful and that's, you know, one of the nice things about Disney World is that they still do things like that. So, cheers to the piano player. His name was Kelly. I could not see where he was from, but he was wonderful. Thank you. All right, so then for my main course, I got the bangers and mash. Okay, I got what I think is the ultimate mash. I tried to. I got potatoes, sausage, red wine, and a mushroom. And it kind of took me a minute to get it all on the board. Okay. The first thing that I really noticed is that red wine sauce. It's really, really wonderful. It's really rich, which I like. It's very flavorful, which I think kind of helps because the sausage, even though it's good, it's not super flavorful. It's not, you know, it doesn't have a lot of herbs or things. But it's really good. That bed of potatoes is so creamy. I think it's a nice change from my traditional fish and chips that I normally get. The onions are very strong, though, so if you don't like that onion flavor, I would kind of steer clear of that because it's not super apparent when you first get the dish. But the onions are very strong. And I really like the red wine sauce, but if you don't like a savory red wine sauce that's a little bit thicker and richer, you're not going to enjoy this. I really like it. <laughs> For my dessert, I got the sticky toffee pudding. It's steamed pudding cake, which they have in quotations, served with warm vanilla custard and a hot butter rum sauce. you in the face in the best way. It is hot and it's just sticky toffee pudding. That is so wonderful. The cake is dense but it soaks up all of like the caramel and the pudding underneath. Oh my gosh. This is absolutely to die for. Alright, so I just finished up with the Rosen Crown. It was delicious. I couldn't eat 90% of it because I've eaten so much today. But I'm very excited. I'll be very excited to eat this tomorrow night. And they gave me my ticket for the Festival of the Holidays, uh, the Candlelight Processional. So here it is. It has the date on it and the time for my show. All right, so I finally made it and I'm seated for the Candlelight Processional showing. I came to the 831 and every single night a celebrity narrator tells the story of Christmas, recounting the biblical tale of a savior born in Bethlehem. Woven into the production are stirring songs of hope and joy played by an orchestra and a mass choir. I am so excited and I'm so, so excited to say that tonight's um, narrator is Simu Liu very pumped. I love Marvel. I literally have on my Marvel ring. Some of the other celebrity narrators this year are Whoopi Goldberg, Josh Gad, Neil Patrick Harris, and Angela Bassett. It fills up fast, so make sure to get in line really early or even book a dining package. I booked the dining package, and so we had really good seats, but you never know. I, know, I got here about 30 minutes before uh, they let us in, and I was all the way back in Japan. So definitely consider getting in pretty early if you want to make sure that you have good seats or guest seats at all. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. Very long time. And I do want to give a special shout out to our volunteer cast choir and to the voices of the It's Folks are in robes, okay? That's all, I'm, that's all I'm saying. So that was it. It just wrapped up. I am actively leaving the theater, but it was so beautiful. I genuinely teared up. It was just a great story, and the cast members are amazing. Voices of Liberty is amazing, and I did cry, and I hope I get to do this again this year. The quintessential view. Classic look. Oh, they know what they're doing. 
Are you excited about living the with the land? land. Living with the land right now. Do you want to know a fun fact about this mural? Do you see how it curves down like this onto the floor? Yeah. I bet you thought that that was just like a cool design choice, right? I did think that. Well, guess what? What? When they designed the mural, they did it with the wrong <laughs> measurements well, of, of the building. And when they got here, because it's the same gentleman that did the, the mosaic inside Cinderella Castle. Yeah. Like, he was like, put it on the floor, I, I don't know. Yeah, I got all this nice material and this beautiful design. Let's make it wrap down on the floor. That's cool. That's hilarious. Yeah. Cosmic Rewind. Yay! That's the that's the way you say it for Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, I'm so excited. Listen, I know this isn't gonna happen, but all I want is for the backward launch to happen and for it to go. I don't ask for much this Christmas. It's not gonna do that. But I would die if it did. We we can sing louder than the music. I'm actually very confident. Wow. Um, not only are we so beautifully Christmas themed, we are in a room <laughs> by ourselves. Where's the line? Is this the time? This is the time to ride Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Remember how for food and wine I was joking about the the, the wristlets for the gift cards May I introduce being an anklet? Festival choker. Okay. I've never no, felt so preteen. This is good. Now from one to ten, how excited are we? Uh, ten. I said this morning the festival days are wild, and I stand by. They are very wild. We're doing great, y'all. <laughs> I'm so excited. It's a Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Edition was amazing. So, so good. good. Yeah. Yes. The only change is the music, yes. but... I think that was a baller move. Yeah. Creating an original it's song. It's an original it song. It sounds like it's from the 80s, so it's yes. totally yes. appropriate it, with all the other fits, soundtracks. And then Gru has his own lines where he's uh, like, I am Groot. I, I am Groot. Groot. I if, am Groot. If they release this for streaming, oh my God. I would repeat on, on a loop. This amazing. is a Christmas hit that we all yeah. need. Give us yes. Run, Rocket, Run. Yes. run Give run, us Run, run Rocket, run. run. Release it! So, final thoughts. Everybody's favorite part of the day. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Have I got something for you, friends? Oh, no. My hands are getting tired. This is real. Okay. Okay, okay. this is real. In Norway, oh, okay, they have multiple okay. Santas, and one of them lives in a corn shack, and he gets mischievous. Ah! If you don't feed him rice <laughs> porridge, I, I couldn't. I'm, I'm not exaggerating when I say that there is nothing that could have happened that could have prepared for me to hear that mischievous rice porridge corn shack Santa Santa, was your favorite real. part. Of I, I, I identify with him, and I love him. I love that for you. Thank you. I'm also interested. Also, like, shout out to the peanut stew. Okay. 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 Life changing. Soft, All right. Soft lunch. Favorite yeah. part of the day. My favorite part besides Guardians was the hot chocolate over at Chester's. That's one of my Glacier. favorites. Oh, so good. One of my faves. So good. I was just going to say the Heim booth, but now it feels so underwhelming that I don't even know what to say. <laughs> and yours might be candlelight processional. Yeah, that's true. true. That's true. It might be candlelight. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, be candlelight. I, think the, I think my favorite thing of the whole day was hanging out with you guys. Aww. And also, oh, we did like. I literally didn't see you all day. Legit did not see you. <laughs> I saw you the most. Oh. I, I saw Quincy the so most. So hanging out with Miranda was your favorite part of the day. I think <laughs> that's true. We did so, such a long time. I think yeah. my favorite part of the day was 
when I realized that Guardians, instead of having um, 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 known Christmas songs, yeah. was an original, original. Guardians-themed Christmas song. It was amazing. So good. It was amazing. My mind was blown. Wow. Both Brie Love and I tried to Shazam yeah. the song on the ride. Right. Separately. And not knowing the other was doing it. She was in the front seat. I was in the back seat. We're like, like, who what song is this? this? Song? <laughs> And Miranda and I were also there. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. And now go watch our holiday snacks video to see the best and worst snacks in Disney World. <gasps> oh my gosh.